Yo, still bills. What's the deal, man? It's, uh, it's Saturday morning, man. That's one of That's a Jeanne song. If y'all ain't heard, man, you know I, I spoke on Jeanne before, man. But um, I'm about to make my run because I think I'm gonna order the fight tonight, man. But peep game, man. We um, I wanna we gotta rap about um, we gotta rap about the fight, man. Um, usually motherfuckers will come on here and give you they give you they spill and lead up to the to the punchline of the entire video they'll give you the pros and cons of each fighter they'll give you breakdowns and analytics on who like not com common opponents and sometimes opponents who may somewhat mirror the style of the opponent that they facing on fight night they'll come in here and they'll do that and it'll lead up to a punchline and I ain't got time to do all that, man. I'ma just come right on out and say, it, man, I, I I I can't I can't see an outing where Canelo comes out victorious in this fight. I, I just I can't. When you talk about you look at Canelo, right? And you look at the Sergey Kovalev fight, his only fight at 175 pounds, and you look at how Sergey Kovalev was able to control him with the jab. Now, granted, this is a Sergey Kovalev that was older and had already been brutally stopped by a later Alvarez and was fresh off of a war with Anthony Yard the fight before that which was like a month and change if I'm not mistaken man they pretty much threw every stipend on Kovalev to ensure that Canelo came out victorious they pretty much gave Canelo the victory without filling out the scorecards for him they put every obstacle in front of him to ensure the fact to ensure that he went now granted that wasn't canelo's doing that was oscar's doing and on protecting the investment all the fuck shit that happened as a like the the stain on canelo's jacket in the now i have no doubt in my mind that oscar was at the helm of all that shit like he he honestly was man he was the canelo wade and the rehydration clauses and all that yeah that was more i, I haven't uh, without a doubt in my mind that that was oscar so it's not me clapping at Canelo, but we can't ignore that fact either. But yeah, they threw every hurdle in front of that man, in that in that man, in front of that man, to ensure that Canelo got a victory. So even in that fight, you see how Canelo was being controlled by the jab the entire fight, and it wasn't like Kovalev was really stepping into that jab or looking to follow that jab up with a devilish right hand it was none of that it was simply peppering him with the jab and just keep just really just just muting canelo's offense his hands was forced to stay at home because you don't know what shot is coming from kovalev and he's still a dangerous puncher this is a nigga who fucking stops i remember watching that fight live cedric agnew with a shot to, with a jab to the body a jab I don't think people understand how the power did you don't use jabs to the body or let alone straight arm punches to the body when it means to stop somebody you get them to drop their guard so you can you know that opens up that window up top that you can capitalize on you don't do that with straight shots to the body you know the the, the, the shots to the body that you're gonna throw the arm you know the bent arm punches the hooks and the uppercuts you're gonna throw those to the body what it means to do damage significant damage you don't throw straight arm straight arm punches to the body unless you're trying to open them up upstairs this man stopped cedric agnew with a jab to the body i can't remember who i saw do it recently but was that was just that that was just really just devilish how he did that man i was like god damn so his jab is that might be his best punch even like you know how he sets up his jab man he faints the one two and steps in with the power jab behind it like he was not trying to get cl clipped by that jab and that jab was controlling him the entire fight really just hurting him wherever it is that he wanted him to go and he had a significant amount of trouble with it with dealing with it so now you know that was an older and a you know a, 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 co a over a older Kovalev that had been through you know his amount the amount of wars that he's been through. He's hold on, hold on, man. he did he, he knockouts, um, a multitude of losses. Whether you agree with the losses or not, he just what he was like. He hasn't been the same fighter since Kovalev, since Andre Ward. <laughs> 
So now you're in front of a fighter who's naturally bigger, a full training camp, no rehydration clauses, none of that. You're in there with a fresh fighter and he's a champion. I think people are really good. I've seen the argument being formed that Charlo has more knockouts than he has fights. Yeah, you know he does, but look, let's compare the caliber of competition that Charlo is fighting compared to Bavall. Everybody wants to denigrate Joe Smith Jr. Joe Smith Jr. has a really good resume. Later Alvarez, Andres Fanfara, fucking uh, 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 um, Jesse Hart. He has a good resume. He's a champion. So that a, that victory has aged well. And then you, John Pascal, Sullivan Barrera, who had never been stopped up until that time. Uh, and he's not even a power puncher. He's not known as a, as a, as a power puncher like that. So then you got Sullivan Barrera. He stopped him. You got you know, uh, 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 who else? Uh, ah, why do I always forget who it is that this man has fought? But he has a really good resume. And, uh, you know, as a champion, he's defended his title against other bona fide top dogs in the division. Charlo's about to fight Sulecki. And just fought Juan Macias Montiel last year. Right, let's, let's, it, it makes no sense how somebody can sit here and still denigrate this fight. Nonetheless, we're getting off topic. Bavar is a dude who operates like Kovalev, even though they utilize their straight shots and different type, you know, approaches. Bavar is a dude. Kovalev looks to step in, not too deep in, but right at that, you know, he has, he knows that sweet spot to where he can get full extension on his shots, right around that mid-range area. Bavar is looking as a dude who's looking to fight, you know, you know, on the balls of his feet. He punches on the go. He, you know, he takes that step back off the jabs and off the straights and walks you into those shots. He's a real good counter puncher, real good feet. And that style has historically hindered, you know, give him trouble, gave him trouble, gave him trouble, just really just, you know, agitated him. Even though those, the, no fighter has beat him outside of Floyd with that particular style, it's just the fact that, yo, all right, you, you got Laura, you know, Laura, that was, you know, granted that was years ago, but, you know, even with, you know, Billy Joe Saunders, he was able to find success because he wasn't, he stood his ground mid-ring. He held the center of the ring. And when he did that, he had success for about two or three rounds. Maybe at the very most four. At the very most. He had success when he did that. Holding the middle of the ring. So now you amplify that by someone that's bigger naturally and taller in a bigger division and is a champion and is a, and is accumulated to that weight and accumulated accumulated acclimated to that weight and acclimated to the power of the fighters in that division as well he's been in front of some big punchers Joe Smith Jr. is a big puncher he doesn't set shots up like Canelo but he's a big puncher nonetheless he's acclimated to that he's acclimated to the division and he has the style that historically troubles Canelo. We cannot ignore that. We cannot ignore that. At all. And you're doing yourself a real disservice if you do decide to ignore it. Somebody who can fight off the back, somebody who can fight off the back foot and walk you into straight shots. Now, Bavar isn't the puncher of a Kovalev. No, he's absolutely not. But he has respectable power. And the dimensions in his game is going to enhance his punching power. Because I don't see a dude that's going to just willingly, just, that's going to get herded into the ropes. <laughs> like he did Caleb Plant. He's going to hold the middle of the ring until you give him a reason not to. He has the faster feet between him and Canelo. I think Canelo has the better educated feet putting himself in punching position yeah but can he put himself in punching position in this division that's my thing right there i have to go with the naturally bigger man with the generous dimensions and dimensions in his skill set canelo has more tools in the toolbox but Bavall has enough tools in the toolbox to where 
what he does can be that much more effective because he's naturally bigger. Canelo has the more, you know, he has the bigger vocabulary of punches, but you got to be in punching position to land those punches. You, you dig? He took, Canelo has broken down bigger fight, like taller fighters. He's broken down taller fighters. And if Callum Smith is proven to be anything in the in the light heavyweight division, then I, you know, like I wish I had more to go off of with Callum Smith, despite him locking out Lennon Castillo in what two rounds and him going twelve with Bavall. Callum Smith was not competitive in that Canelo fight. So on shit, when I look at shit like that, I'm ha I have hope for Canelo. I have hope, like, yo, man, he can do this. He can, he can do it. He most definitely can do it. He mo but Callum Smith isn't Bavar. Callum Smith doesn't have the jab like like Bavar has. Callum Smith doesn't, he doesn't command the middle of a ring like Bavar does. He doesn't. So I have to go with Bavar. I have to go with Bavar. I have to go with Bavar. I don't want to. I want Canelo and Bud to be multi-weight undisputed world champions. And even though I'm pulling for Anthony Joshua in the rematch, if somebody has to beat Anthony Joshua, <clears throat> I don't mind it being Usyk. Why? Because now once again, Usyk is a world is a multi-division a multi-division world champion. I don't mind it if anybody is going to beat Anthony Joshua. Even though I'm rooting for Anthony Joshua, I'm sending all my energies to Anthony Joshua for this uh, for his upcoming fight with uh, 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 Usyk. But I want my point is I want Canelo to win for that aspect alone. I do. I want him to win, but I, I got to be a realist. I got and I'm just gonna go with the you know the more I don't want to say the smarter choice, but I want to say. I don't even know how to put it in the context. Bavar's the bigger fighter with a real, a, you know, with tools in the toolbox. The enough tools where we can see Canelo get all of his attributes and contributions that he has to bring to a fight, blanketed. So I'm going with Bavar in this fight. I think it's going 12. I just, you know, I just can't get past how Kovalev was able to control that dude moving forward. I can't get past that. How he was able to control that dude, with the, you know, with the with the straight shots moving forward. It's gonna be that. He's gonna, gonna fuck around and feel like it's a, you know, you swinging a mile away at Bavar because he's gonna be moving backwards. You can't throw the high guard up and just walk through this dude. It's not gonna happen. Can Canelo revert back to being that slippery up, you know, fantastic upper, you know, upper body movement type boxer? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he does, but I don't know. You dig what I'm saying? Like, are you the catch and shoot? I know the catch and shoot is there, man, but can you be in deep enough to where you can actually land the shot without over, you know, without lunging? That's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying. I'm pulling for Canelo to win this fight, but I just got to go with Bavar. So... I hope to be wrong. I really do. I'm ordering the fight. I'm making my rounds right now to clean my house. So when the homies come over, they ain't, it ain't funky and dirty in there, man. But I'm going with Bavar. I hope I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. There's no other time I would want to be proven wrong than now, man. So deuces.